This video is going to show you 10 things teachers must know when using Google Classroom. Before we jump into the video, I want to say a big thank you to the sponsors of this video, Satchel, who we will talk about later on. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Blakemore and I'm a teacher here in Dubai. I've been using Google Classroom for a couple of years now and as a result I've been able to come up with a range of different things that I feel teachers must know when using Google Classroom, whether it be recent updates or other things to make you more efficient. So without further ado, let's jump straight into my must know number one. That is to make sure that you invite other teachers into your Google Classroom. What that's going to do is speed up time. Not only can you manage other people's classrooms if they invite you into theirs, they can also manage yours. The key difference when you invite other people into your Google Classroom is that you can then reuse things from their classroom or they can reuse things from yours. What that's going to do is speed up a lot of time because then you can go up into their classroom and see what's worked for them. If there's a certain assignment they've made, if they're planning a topic such as English, you can reuse that into your classroom and it really works for working as a team and saving time. Number two is to control stream, email and general notifications. Now it can become quite overwhelming for both the teacher and the pupils to see a range of notifications come through on the stream. Make sure you go into the little cog, which can be a little bit harder to find and control your notifications. Some of the key ones that I think are really important are email notifications, making sure you think about that, and also making sure you think about what is available on the stream. Personally, I don't really like to have anything on the stream as it makes it really easy to post certain updates and make it quite clear for children, but you do you. Number three is something that took me a long time to get used to, but it's okay to use third-party applications when using Google Classroom. Furthermore, it actually makes more sense and makes it easier for teachers. Some of my favorites for using within Google Classroom are Moat and Screencastify. It makes it really easy as a teacher to give verbal feedback if I'm using Moat or record myself when I'm using Screencastify. And as a result, I can attach those recordings or verbal feedback to in particular assignments. While we're on the topic of resources to support using Google Classroom, this brings us on to our sponsor, Satchel whose learning platform, Satchel One, is made up of a range of different school, classroom, and behavior management apps. As an official partner for Google, Satchel are the perfect sponsors for today's video, as their learning platform integrates with Google in a range of different ways. The ability to set assignments through Satchel One's homework app, Show My Homework, means that teachers can either set the assignment within Satchel One and easily share it to Google Classroom, or set work in Google Classroom and have it automatically appear in Satchel One. If you're looking to give tailored feedback, you can ask your students to submit their Google Docs to you directly from their Google Drive. You can open their file and add feedback directly onto it. Attendance. From experience, sorting attendance is a challenge through Google Classroom and involves lots of setting up Google Forms. Luckily, Satchel One has their own attendance app integrated into their platform, which lets you take attendance, track absence, and more. It even writes back that data to your school's Sims if you use it. My favorite part of Satchel is something that I feel has been missing from my life, and that's the seating plan arrangements. Teachers can either choose from a template that's been created by the school or quickly set up their own using a range of tools within the app. While looking at your class, you can drag and drop children into specific seats or auto-designate them. From there, you can see further details about each child, such as academic grades, behavior points, and pastoral concerns. This has only really scratched the surface of what Satchel One has to offer and with plans to take integrations with Google further, make sure you check them out using the link below. Tip number five is to set up a Google Chrome bookmark folder for your Google Classroom. Now, a lot of people don't actually know about this tip full stop. You can actually set up a bookmark folder and you can put inside there all of your different classrooms if you teach multiple. I like to use not only my Google Classroom, but I have things like my Google Drive integrated in there, which links back to the last must know, and then other things that I need throughout the day, such as my registration and other things like that. So just make sure that you set that up and it's gonna really save you some time. Tip number six is something that I didn't actually realize you could do, and that is to return multiple assignments. It took me a while, probably about a month or two, of using Google Classroom during online distance learning to realize that this was possible and it saved me so much time. What you can do is go into the Google Classroom, you can click a little checkbox and that will click on all of the children. From there, you can then return assignments to all of your children. 
that's going to be really useful to save you time. What I like to do and did do through my distance learning is start off by opening all the children's different assignments, quickly flick through using the little shortcut that you can see down below. And then from there, once I've given the verbal feedback through Moat, I would then exit them all and then click on all the assignments and return them, which would save a lot of time from clicking on one person, returning, click on another person, return. Yeah, it just saves a lot of time, make sure you do it. Tip number seven is to create material or add things to your screen to reduce submissions. Now, it took me a while to realize that you can actually add material or add links straight into the stream to reduce the amount of assignments that the children feel they need to complete, which also reduces notifications. Now, this is really effective because you can just add material for the children to access. This is great for things like videos, and then that way it's not overwhelming for the children or teachers. Number eight, use the left-hand side topics. Now, this is going to be really good for efficiency. I didn't realize that this existed until after distance learning. When you create a topic, those topics in the Classwork tab are then integrated on the left-hand side. You can click through those topics and then find whatever has been set as an assignment or material or something along those lines within those specific sections. I find this really useful nowadays in class to find the assignment that the children has been set for the day and open up the Google Slides from there. If there's something that I know I've set through Google Classrooms, but I can't find in the topic I thought I was able to uh, set it into, then I use Control F to search for that assignment within all topics, and then it will find it from there, which is really good if you've accidentally made a clerical error and it's in the wrong place for whatever reason. That's like a double, double tip, bonus tip. So let's move on to the next one. Number nine is a game changer and is due to a recent development in Google Classroom, and that is to use the different types of font styles and bullet points when setting an assignment or material through Google Classroom's Classwork tab. Now, what you can now do is use bullet points, bold, italics, underlining, and it makes it really clear. One of my major complaints of Google Classroom, if you haven't already seen that video, have a click on the link up there is that it's quite challenging for the children to see what to do when you're setting an assignment. Now, due to the bullet points and things that I've just mentioned, it makes it much clearer, especially for my class because they are younger. Number 10 is a game changer, and I didn't realize this until recently. The mobile version of Google Classroom has more functionality. So iOS or Android, you can actually annotate on different assignments. So whether it's a PDF or something along those lines, as a teacher, I can then annotate those documents and that makes it really clear to children. Or children, if they have a mobile device, can also annotate documents. This would be really, really effective. For example, if you set a PDF of a letter and children need to find the features of a letter through those annotations if they have a mobile device. But I thought that was really interesting and something that I know you probably won't know. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, make sure you like it. I also wanted to say thank you to Satchel, the sponsors of this video, one more time. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I know that there's a large percentage of you out there who haven't yet subscribed, and I know you'll find other videos that I've created useful, so feel free to see those too. Hopefully I will see you in the next one, but until then, I'm out.